Netflix's survival drama, Alice in Borderland, is one of TV's most impressive spectacles this sprawling Japanese manga adaptation is rarely subtle. But its ability to deliver on wide-scale expectations make it a true TV standout. A lot of time in, Alice in Borderland, is spent talking about different worlds. There's the one that its characters find themselves in and the one that they want to return to. The first is a largely abandoned Tokyo. With only a fraction of its citizens left to roam the streets after being mysteriously transported there. One afternoon, Arasu Kento Yamazaki and some friends duck into a bathroom to hide and emerge to find their city almost entirely empty. In this Netflix show based on Haro Aso's manga, Arasu is just one of a roughly undefined group of people looking to stay alive in their new alternate reality. Where each person staves off death by playing wickedly manipulative games designed to pit players against each other and themselves. Each game corresponds to specific playing card in a deck. The higher the stakes, the longer the reward for making it through to the end. So the first season of, Alice in Borderland, was a primal story of survival. There was the discovery of the rules of this purgatorial city, with Arasu and a shifting team of compatriots trying to figure out how see tomorrow. Much less get back to the version of life they knew before. That home is the second world that gets talked about even more in season 2. Death still lurks around every corner. But for those who've lasted long enough for the city to be covered in vines and grass and overgrowth that, the last of us, would be proud of, survival has become a job. And, naturally, stuck at their daily makeshift offices waiting for the next test of wits and or brawn, many of them are dreaming about what it would take to quit. For those afraid those atmospheric changes may lead to a change in scope, fear not. There may not be anything in season 2 quite as striking as the image of Arasu and his two pals standing dumbfounded in a completely empty Shibuya intersection. But director Shinsuke Sato is still taking full advantage of painting on a giant, citywide canvas. Picking up right where the last season left off. There's barely time to take a deep breath before the real threat of violence comes charging up the abandoned avenue. Before long. Arasu and the gang are thrust right into the heart of one of the most thrilling car chase sequences on any sized screen in recent memory. Having cleared the rest of the deck in season 1, Arasu, Usagi, Tao Tsuchiya, and the remaining friend group find themselves picking off the face cards, signaled by giant blimps that hover the sky. Everyone's playing by similar, win to stay alive, rules that govern season 1. But this time, it's not some shadowy force calling the shots. Each test involves face-to-face -face meetings with the Jack of Hearts or Queen of Spades or any other of the final twelve. Staring into the eyes of the mastermind of each challenge makes it less of an ambiguous test and more of an elimination round. Arasu's ticket home has to be punched at the expense of an official challenger. Of course. It's hard to describe the logistics of Alice in Borderland without putting words like real and home in the imaginary quotes that the show's characters basically put around them when spoken out loud. A lot of the philosophizing here can get repetitive over the course of the season, especially when it comes to different players psychoanalyzing each other mid-game. Sometimes, there are some legitimate breakthroughs both for the audience and the people involved, about what people value. There are also plenty of times when members of this capable cast are reduced into voicing the faintest subtext out loud.